Yes, so good morning. Thank you all for joining me in a discussion about innovation that is happening right here in China. We're investing with you, the developer community. We have been investing in open source solutions because we know that when there are standards and when there are open source offerings, that the pace of technology innovation and the pace of technology adoption accelerates. I think for the past hundred years, the Industrial Revolution put us into small cages. Consumerism has killed a lot of uh, creativity. But for the post-industrial generation, they should have more freedom to create, to explore, to invent. I think through Make a Movement, we are bringing it back. So we're here with the MakerBot uh, Cupcake CNC, which is a 3D printer. You can build things like Tom York's head, because he actually open sourced the data that was filmed uh, for a video of his. Now what's also interesting about this whole scenario is that there's a whole thriving community of users who are taking these to build all kinds of different objects. They're sharing the objects online, and additionally they're sharing information on how to build and improve upon the design. Everything is completely open sourced, the software is open source, the hardware is open source. I just can't wait to see what people come up with. I think the recent emergence of the maker movement pretty much started around 2003-2004 in the US. Laser cutting and 3D printing is helping people to be able to build stuff and actually build it for fun rather than just having business purpose. Right around that time, this guy named Dale Doherty, he was thinking about starting a publication called Make. Before Make came out, the only word we had was a hacker, right? And I think he didn't want to call the magazine hack because it had a really negative connotation at the time. And Make was sort of the thing you would type to compile a program, so it would resonate well with, with programmers. And Maker was like sort of the demonym of people who would read the magazine. That sort of coined the term Maker. I think in creating that publication, he sort of solidified the movement and the Maker Fair created that phenomenon. In China, in the beginning, nobody knows about makers. Nobody cared about makers, but because we go to the Maker Fairs in New York, in Bay Area, we're so jealous. So instead of waiting for someone to do it, we say, why don't we do it? When they told me they were gonna bring the first Maker Fair here, I was like, how do you have a Maker Fair in an area where people don't make for a recreational thing, they do it for a job, right? You know, because making in the West is something that you're using to remind people who are in service economies that there's a thing called manufacturing, right? When you have a manufacturing economy, you want to remind them that there's manufacturing that seems weird. And what I realized is that actually China's middle class is the size of the entire United States population. So even if a small section of Chinese people had risen to the upper middle class, it's big enough to create a movement in China itself compared to the United States scale of making. We don't know if it's going to be successful or not. The first year we have over 60 makers, and last year we have uh, over 200 makers. It's a huge number. Some interesting phenomena also emerging out of this in the past years. What's happening is the open source hardware movement. Traditionally, the circuit board is closed and proprietary. You need to have a contract, a non-disclosure, and a huge sum of prepayment in order to get access. But with open source hardware, everybody can access to that information, and everybody can modify that to suit their need. People here, they create a circuit board and just under the expectation, it is going to be open. It's going to be copied and evolved by someone else. There's no one running around in Shenzhen and say, okay, well, I should be credited for creating this. If someone else can make this, get someone else to use it, merrier the better. Not having the ego attached to a creations and understand how actually an open source system works. Uh, the maker movement is at that junctures. I'm getting a little sick of hearing about the same people on TV over and over and over again, so I decided to do something about it. This Arduino project, which I called the Enough Already, will mute the TV anytime any of these overexposed personalities is mentioned. To mute the TV, I'm going to use an IR LED. Now, anytime a keyword is mentioned, the TV will mute for 30 seconds. Our producers caught up with Kim Kardashian earlier today. 
it should do a pretty good job of protecting our ears from having to hear about the details of Kim Kardashian's wedding. Arduino is becoming the trigger point because it has so many millions of makers using that. This is a prototype he's trying to make. A robotic arm for the uh, people who have Parkinson's diseases. We want to make a spoon uh, like this. And if you just uh, shake here, and it's yeah. stable. If we come to Shenzhen like 10 years ago, 20 years ago, it will be very difficult for a maker to tap into the resources. But now you have so many resources, it's in the middle of a reforming. So the big company, especially the uh, silicon providers like Intel, like Atomail, like TI, they look at that, oh, we have new customers. We have new possibility for new future applications of our technologies. So they make their own console board, like Edison, like Curie. So they, they, they want to tap into the early stage of the development of the applications. Now this board is uh, based on the Intel technology. So it's a tiny dual core computer system. It has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and it also it, it runs a Linux operating system on it. You do not need to write any boring code, right? In a smart node, you can just drag and drop and link them together. Uh, we have tried to um, introduce it to nine years old. This thing is a little bit difficult, but it's acceptable. What they're doing is they're learning how to code on a computer, translate that into hardware, and they'll build a project on our laser cutter or our 3D printer for something to accept a stimulus, light, motion, or sound, and then output some result. Last year, one kid built a key reminder for his mom so that when she left the house, a motion sensor would pick up her movement and say, hey, don't forget the key. And it's kind of funny to hear that a eight-year-old will know whether he wants to be doing mechanical circuits, mechanical objects connected with circuits, or just a purely software experience. So that, that's entry level, and then we give them more systematic uh, introduction to how to build up the skills. Off you go, you can use the makerspace to create whatever you want. You are genius, you are young inventors. I've seen some great examples of open source hardware being used to actually make a difference and create a, a, a better world. And, and the, the difficulty is monetizing that, because I do believe that business solves a lot of the world's problems, um, and people need to be able to make money. So if you're providing value to the world, which is making the world a better place, then there should be compensation for that. So as long as your open source model can work to be monetized in some way, then I do believe that it is a really good way to very quickly get better and better, better products. The question is, how do you monetize it? In 2010, I started the first makerspace in China called Xinchejian. I got invited a lot to give a talk about open source hardware. The first question always come up on people's mind is, well, how do you protect your intellectual property and how can you make money? if you don't protect your intellectual property. I got that question in Shanghai, I got that question in Beijing. I got that question everywhere I go. But when I give the same talk in Shenzhen, uh, the reaction I got is, so what's new about this? We've been making money on this for 20 years. The reason we're here in, in Wachong Bay is literally because of the electronics markets. You know, it's a fantastic resource of all different possible components and different devices which can kind of be Frankenstein together to make prototypes by the teams. It's a source of inspiration. It's a source of discovery of new products that could potentially be taken to the West. And like I see every month a different invention down there. Nine times out of ten, they're probably not going to make it to the West, but some of them do. This is a very important part of the Huachang Bay. You can use it to use it to use it to use it. This product is a product that we have 
，它就是这个东西要装在羽毛球托下面，就是你打球的时候，它会给你记录数据，你的力度，还有你的今天挥了多少次拍。So I want to see what's even upstream of what the, what's going to hit the tack in the United States. You can get a little bit of a feel here. You, you see a couple of things popping up here or there. A, a little shop will, right, will, will pop out of nowhere selling these things you hadn't heard of before. Like the hoverboards were here a couple of years before they hit the United States. And then you eventually sort of see them hit the states and other countries. Here is the most famous place in the United States. Here are all the small businesses. But they are all the latest and the most famous and the most famous things in the United States. Here are all the latest. 呃，这一个就，这一个是一个 3D 眼镜 ，3D 手机壳，拿过来之后，这里就是 3D 效果的电影。There's a number of different ways to sort of look at the the market. For an engineer, you're sort of limited at thumbing through catalogs and looking at pictures and very slowly going through specification sheets and and waiting a day for stuff to come. And for example, if you want to uh, put a switch in a product. Um, you want to know how it feels. You want to kind of know the exact size and the, the little mountings and the fussy bits. And it can take a long time to find exactly the right part. You come here and there are like stalls with like, like a thousand switches in it, like hundreds of different types. And you can just reach in and just touch them and play with them and can like walk stall by stall by stall and, and see all the different variety. It's a huge bazaar essentially of components. All of them are sort of immediately here right now. And it's not, they're not, it's not just a showroom. If, if, once you find the switch you like, you can be like, hi, I like to buy a thousand of them. And then for a very low price, you can just over the counter buy it, carry it off and you know, go into production. It's got a huge amount of acquired um, knowledge and skills. There's electrical engineers there who you know, solder up 50 PCBs for you. Um, in record time, or you can go together. You can go down there and piece together different components to make a new mobile phone. Um, there's nowhere else in the world you can do that. The interesting thing about the components that you get there is, you know, they're often stripped out of other products that have been created, and so, you know, you can get like a, a chipset that was in a notebook, for example, for you know, just less than fifteen dollars, which can enable computing power inside a new product. Um, that's you know a fantastic resource for some of the for some of the startups, um, but then also that kind of um, philosophy has kind of spread out all around China. Uh, you can fix your phone here. 告诉他们这个是我们的朋友靠得住的，就给个实价就行了。也是拿着手机练嘛，拆解拆解，时间久了就。呃，也不是各个地方嘛，这个已经好几好多年。呃，他们在里面的，他们都是一个像修手机，都是一个圈子，他们相互之间都会认识。可能他某一个人，他只会做一个部分的功能，另外一个部分的功能呢，他会交给他的另外一个朋友去做，所以他很快就可以把这个东西做好。在华强北呢。有的人他就会设计，有的人呢他就会把这个产品生产出来，有的人呢他会卖，所以他们之间全是合作的关系。所以呢，在这里呢，他生产研发一款产品推向市场时间特别特别的短，只需要两三个月的时间。但是这在国际上，呃，传统的行业里面，它需要一年的时间，但在华强北只需要三个月。去吧，他这里有炮，啊，这里有炮要。在里面嘛，所以我要现在的话要一个真空机把它。呃，基本他们还是属于老一老一代的创业者，他们老一代的创业者就是学徒制，就有些人先在这里闯荡，然后他就会带徒弟，徒弟学会了之后就会另外的开档口，开这么一个小店，所以呢，他们的技术就是跟着师傅学出来的，是这么一个模式。When we're starting to look at the maker coming to Shenzhen and when they're starting to write about their Shenzhen experience, there's this excitement on how open their system is, like nowhere else. You can buy all sorts of stuff. Everything is available in volume. And that part of the openness becoming the attractions, bringing more people making hardware to Shenzhen. But I think on the West, as soon as they're starting to turn into business, they fall into the old models of the uh, everything proprietary, keeping it secret, and 
There's a binary distinction between the makers and the hardware startup in the West. The maker, you do this for fun, you do this for your passions. But when you're starting to make this into a business, uh, you should forget about sharing, you should forget about all this open stuff and focus in on the business. This is Apple's logo. It's here to make it, but it's made and it's really the same. And then the text behind the text, these text, can be made to the same. The other thing is the other thing. Yes. Actually, the most scary thing is that the iPhone still hasn't appeared in the world. Here, it's already been a whole lot of the same. It's almost the same. But actually, its quality is not good. It's almost the same. The iPhone is 7,000, right? But actually, in the same way, it's about 1,000 euros. It's almost the same. In here, it's the same. 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 There's very little differentiation between I want to make this for fun and I want to make this for profit. There's no binary division of the mindset of makers versus startup. Uh, maker and startup in China is a continuum. You shouldn't be stopped from making money out of the thing you love to do. Uh, and you should not be forced to choose between open and proprietary just because you want to become a business. Right now it's just uh, in the West that we haven't seen an uh, open source hardware system working. They just sort of like, oh, the schematics are on the desk. I will conveniently help myself to them, make a photocopy, and then leave the factory with them, right? You know, was that stealing or was that open source, right? In, in the West, it's called theft, right? In, out here, it's called sharing. I don't think that the West fully understands it yet. The notion of kind of just moving faster than your competitors rather than fighting over IP, I think is something that will become more and more relevant.